Hello everyone, this is Vibhav Shandilya, an MBBS student from ESIC Government Medical College, Hyderabad. And today we're going to continue our uh, bloodstream series. And today we're going to discuss uh, a very theoretically and practically important topic, malaria. And uh, malaria is basically caused by a parasite called uh, plasmodium, right? And uh, in this video, we're going to uh, cover the classification and the life cycle of the plasmodium parasite okay so let's get started so coming to the uh, classification or of the agents which cause malaria we have plasmodium vivax plasmodium falciparum plasmodium malaria and plasmodium ovale okay these are the four types and so now they also have alternate names which are very important because because they also denote the kind of fever the the days the fever will recur in so first of all we have a plasmodium vivax which is also known as benign tertian malaria and uh, so this means that it will recur every third day the fever uh, here will recur every third day or in 48 hours next we have uh, plasmodium falciparum uh, which is also known as malignant tertian malaria this is a very dangerous one and the, here also the fever recurs every third day the third day the fever will occur that is in 48 hours 48 hours after the fever then we have plasmodium malaria which is also known as benign quartan malaria and uh, here the fever recurs every fourth day in 72 hours and finally plasmodium ovale is basically ovale tertian malaria where the fever recurs every third day okay so this is these are the four main classifications go through them once these are very important and you must have seen them uh, in your neat exam as well uh, so now let's get to the life cycle which is also a major chunk of this malaria and they usually ask this in the viva and uh, theory exams as well so the life cycle of malaria is actually divided into two in man and in the mosquito okay we have both and so this is we're gonna cover this one by one so let's start in the man in the man um, uh, a rough overview we see that the parasite travels from the blood to the liver then after the liver back into the blood then it goes infects the rbc's ruptures the rbc's and we get back into the blood where the mosquito sucks these parasites and takes it inside itself to complete the life cycle and then reinfect the man okay so let's uh, discuss this in detail so the infective form which actually enters the man is the sporozoids so these sporozoids are present in the salivary glands of the mosquito which on bite enters the bloodstream of the human okay so after entering the bloodstream since we have not yet infected the rbc so we are talking about the pre erythrocytic stage here okay so in the pre erythrocytic stage the sporozoids which have entered uh, they actually bind to the hepatocytes the receptors on the hepatocytes via the, the circumsporozoid proteins on their surface okay so the circumsporozoid proteins on the surface of sporozoid bind to the receptors on the hepatocyte mainly you need to know that they bind to the hepatocyte receptors and they gain entry okay so after gaining entry in the hepatocyte they transform into a trophozoid which is basically the feeding stage of the parasite then this trophozoid actually exists inside a pre-erythrocytic schizont understood so uh, this uh, trophozoite transforms my um, I'm, I'm sorry the trophozoite transforms into a pre erythrocytic schizont within which are present merozoites okay uh, a slight correction so the trophozoite transforms into the pre erythrocytic schizont which contains numerous merozoites okay and these merozoites they keep dividing and increase keep increasing in number and as they keep increasing in number there comes a point when the uh, when the hepatocyte right you in the liver at this point right they entered the hepatocyte so the liver hepatocyte ruptures and when it ruptures these merozoites are released all of these merozoites are released right so till now we saw that the sporozoites came in the blood they went in the liver there they converted into trophozoite then pre erythrocytic schizont which contained merozoites which divided and then bursted out uh, the mid, uh, into the bloodstream okay uh, at the same time a side point is that uh, some sporozoites they actually uh, remain dormant in the liver and these are called hypnozoites and they can cause relapse fever after relapse uh, infection after years 
so these are only the sclerocytes of vivax and ovil so uh, uh, pg bed if you uh, need that uh, now the mirosites which are released they actually bind to another type of receptors the glycophorin receptors on the rbc so the mirosites will bind on the glycophorin receptors on rbc and gain entry into the rbc now by endocytosis and hence we have reached the erythrocytic schizogony stage okay erythrocytic stage in the erythrocytic stage we see that the uh, mirosites which entered the rbc they transfer back into the early trophozoites okay so they transform back into a type of early trophozoites which are basically the ring form okay they have a signet ring appearance the early trophozoites these early trophozoites will naturally transform into a larger uh, late trophozoite okay or a more irregular form and irregular means an amoeboid form okay so the early trophozoite transforms into the late trophozoites okay now the late trophozoites uh, will undergo schizogony all right it will undergo schizogony which basically means a type of asexual reproduction uh, also uh, it will be noteworthy here to mention that asexual reproduction occurs in man and sexual reproduction occurs in the mosquito right so basically schizogony means uh, asexual reproduction so here we see that uh, the late trophozoite the amoeboid form it undergoes schizogony to produce 6 to 30 daughter mirozoites so the progression is kind of similar where we saw that the trophozoites were being converted into a mirozoite right so here also the late early trophozoites late trophozoite and then the daughter mirozoites okay and these are arranged in a rosette if you want to know that now these daughter mirozoites these multiple daughter mirozoites they are within the erythrocyte schizont correct like similarly we had the pre-erythrocytic schizont these will be present in the erythrocytic schizont see it's a very similar progression here now over time the mirozoites yet again will multiply uh, and uh, again they will the rbcs will rupture uh, because of the numerous mirozoites and uh, they will release these daughter mirozoites into the bloodstream okay back into the bloodstream from the rbc and uh, what actually is released is the, these daughter mirozoites the, and a certain malarial pigment which is known as hemozoin okay a malarial pigment hemozoin which is actually a combination of hematin and iron porphyrin okay you can know about that more if you want but the main um, information is that the rbc is ruptured to release the daughter mirozoites and the malarial pigment hemozoin along with toxins and this rupture of the rbc is what causes the malarial fever after each cycle correct so now some, uh, most of these uh, mirozoites will uh, rupture and cause these uh, cause this fever and then they will actually prefer to reinfect and uh, other rbcs but uh, some uh, mirozoites actually transform into gametocytes okay not all but some some will you know go back into other rbcs and some will transform into gametocytes right and in the gametocytes they will form male gametocyte or female gametocyte right male gametocyte will be smaller micro gametocyte and female will be larger or macro okay and also here if you want to know the gametocyte of plasmodium falciparum is very characteristically a banana shaped gametocyte okay continuing the male gametocyte and the female gametocyte which we formed they will be trans transferred into the mosquito when when the mosquito bites you again so first the mosquito transferred its sporozoites in us and now it's taking back the gametocyte from us the male and gametocyte the say the gametocytes enter inside the mosquito and the male ones undergo x flagellation and the female ones do not undergo any flagellation and the male one converts into an eight flagellated motile male gamete or a micro gamete okay we form the gamete now from the gametocyte while the female one is a non-motile macro gamete obviously fusion will occur and a zygote will form this zygote will then uh, convert into a more motile elongated form known as ukinate which then penetrates the stomach wall of the mosquito and then it gets covered by a thin elastic membrane to form an oocyst okay so gametocyte entered mosquito gamete gamete fused zygote ukinate and then oocyst after coming on, on by a thin elastic membrane each oocyst right each oocyst will then 
and while the process of meiosis or sporogony form four sporozoites okay i think uh, you'll understand it's coming full circle now the oocysts will form four sporozoites by meiosis which will be sp uh, spindle shapes and then naturally these four sporozoites will rupture the mature oocysts okay in which they were and these and they will migrate to the salivary gland of the mosquito okay and when they migrate into the salivary gland of the mosquito naturally when the mosquito bites the human again again the sporozoites transfer transfers inside the blood of the man okay so let's briefly take another overview sporozoites where the mosquito enter into the man's blood into the preerythrocytic stage there they enter into the hepatocytes to convert to trophozoite the trophozoite converts into a preerythrocytic schizont which contains numerous merozoites which rupture and then tend to infect rbcs in the rbcs they actually convert back into the early trophozoite stage then the late trophozoite stage then an erythrocytic schizont which can again contains multiple daughter merozoites these daughter merozoites rupture to cause the characteristic fever which we uh, discussed was either every third day or fourth day and uh, after the malaria fever some of the merozoites instead of reinfecting other rbcs they form gametocytes these gametocytes will then via mosquito bite and uh, be taken into the mosquito body where they form gametes motile male gamete and immotile female gamete uh, fusion causes zygote formation oocyte oocyst the oocyst by meiosis forms sporozoites and the sporozoite will then rupture the oocyst to actually migrate to the salivary glands where the cycle keeps continuing so this was the life cycle of the malarial parasite a very important and uh, actually this seems very easy now and you just have to revise it once or twice and it will be good for your exams and so just i hope this video was useful and in the next video we'll discuss the pathogenesis and clinical features as well as the lab diagnosis and any treatment if available okay so see you guys in the next video thank you